Hello, hello, beautiful people. I hope that everyone is doing well. Welcome back to a new video. My name is Evelyn Borta. And thank you everybody who is supporting my channel. Thank you so much for your emails, for your messages. Thank you for supporting my other channel as well, where I'm sharing readings. So today I am coming with a new channel information, which um, it's been a while that I shared the channel information with you on this channel. I am constantly channeling information. So on my Patreon, many times I'm doing like group guidances where I channel information. So whatever is coming through, I share it. But it's been a while that I shared a channel message here on YouTube. There was a period when I was receiving a lot through automatic writing and then I stopped because there was a time of initiation for me on integration as well. So there was a lot of purification in terms of channeling as well and how the information was coming through because it all comes down to the level of consciousness of the individual. And uh, especially these past few weeks have been amazing in that sense that I have been initiated to a higher level uh, when I was faced with my fears, with my shadows. I know many of us have been through that particular thing in different forms through people as well so it's been amazing but it's been uncomfortable as well and challenging as well i lost weight as well you probably can see it on my face and that is the reason why i wasn't very active this past period on this channel not because i lost weight but because i was rethinking there was a re rethinking readjusting of my path and yeah lots of things have changed my perspective has changed so I'm very, very grateful for every single opportunity, everything that came into my life these uh, past few weeks, I can say. Yeah, so I'm here and uh, I channeled some information this time from my higher self and I want to tell you about this information. Also, I wanted to talk about a few things in today's video related to our relationships with other people and just consciousness and then projection as well but it's somehow related to the channel information that i received so yeah i will discuss those things so let me just read this information for you and then i will discuss what downloads i also received in regards to this information so what i was told by my higher staff uh, i wrote it down so i was told that what is happening in the world right now is a rehabilitation so rehabilitation is happening and then i was also told that the housing market is being restructured so there's a restructuring that is happening in the housing market uh, i don't know why it came through first i didn't understand what is the relation between rehabilitation like in terms of our consciousness and us as souls but then i realized that there's a connection between what is happening in the outside world and the inside environment as well so what is happening in our inner world is in the external world as well so internally and externally things are happening in a parallel way so there's a um, connection as well but then also there's growth there's challenge there's restructuring and there's rehabilitation as well so what i understood from this is that the housing market is representing our internal world and our internal system and how we are building that internal system, like the building blocks that now we are working on. And there's a rehabilitation because if we think about the addiction itself and addiction to old patterns, to old structures, to old conditioning, we have to go through this rehabilitation, this rehab in a sense, where there's a tremendous amount of healing that is taking place in our internal world. And when an individual is dealing with addiction, the first step towards that rehabilitation and healing is the recognition, like recognizing those patterns, those coping mechanisms that are no longer serving or are detrimental. There's a recognizing of where those coping mechanisms are coming from. And there's a healing of dysfunctional family structures as well family patterns as well so as within so without and what the housing market and what the economy is representing is exactly what is going on in our internal world now there's a systematic destruction of it we know from external influences but that systematic destruction needs to happen because it's a catalyst for change and 
as we come home to ourselves, then we will be able to come home. We will be able to find our home as well in terms of uh, the housing market. So we will be able to afford a home for ourselves. Okay, so there's a restructuring in the housing market. The prices are very high. Now the individual cannot afford a house to buy a house. And uh, that is very challenging. There are lots of upheavals because finding a home for yourself and affording a home and affording a higher level of living is also sovereignty. So when the basic needs are being met and there's freedom in that sense that we don't need to fight for a home and we don't depend on external influences and circumstances when it comes to our living situation, then that is sovereignty, that is personal power. We have stepped into our personal power, we have healed the lower chakra, and now we can step into our creativity, our passion, which is the sacral chakra, giving birth to ideas, giving birth to what we want to manifest. So we become creators. Um, and yeah, so there's a healing of this chakra system at the moment, and that is being manifested in the housing market and in the economy. It's almost like the prices of food is very high, but are we able to feed our souls? So that is a question, because the more you feed your soul, the more you can feed yourself, and the more you can come home to yourself, you can create a home. I hope it makes sense. So there's a direct correlation between feeding your soul and feeding yourself physically as well as a basic need and then coming home to yourself and coming home to a home as well, like manifesting a home or affording a home and buying a home. And uh, also coming home to ourselves through each other and coming together. Because that is real home when we understand that our shadows are being reflected in the other person. And instead of running away from those shadows when we are encountering difficulties and our shadows are being uh, projected and mirrored in the other person, instead of running away from that person, we face our shadows through that person. We face the difficulties, the uncomfortable situation. So we are no longer afraid to be uncomfortable. So we find our shadows in the other person and we fall in love with our own shadows in the other person. Whenever you meet someone that is reflecting something that is within you that you don't like about yourself, the reason why you met that person is because you are being required to fall in love with that aspect that you pushed aside, that is deep down within you, but you have disconnected from it. You have disowned it. So now you are being required to own that particular aspect. And that is why you are meeting people that are reflecting that back to you. So if you can fall in love with that shadow aspect of the other person, then you have integrated that shadow aspect of yourself as well. And that is an initiation. I also was told by my higher self that the beingness of the individual is being accentuated now. So the beingness of you as an individual because when, when there's an accent put on that, you can find unity as well with the other person. So being individual, but then united at the same time, and that is our biggest challenge now. And um, that is because of this shadow aspect that I was talking about, like finding yourself in the other person. But for that, your individuality will be put under test and under pressure. This means that humans are required to keep their levels of resistance high not running away from situations, own the change. Meaning that instead of pushing it away and pushing it aside, own it. Own the change in yourself. So humans are required to strongly lay down all their cards on the table. This is what I was told. And arrange them step by step, pattern by pattern. A sorting out of patterns and rage being accelerated to a level of acceptance now. So rage is reaching its peak at the moment, collectively as well, individually as well. And we have to integrate that rage, that anger being activated in us. We have to develop a great relationship with our anger, not pushing it aside, but owning it as well. And that is being accelerated to a level of acceptance, like integration and acceptance of the rage. Also, I was told that this empowerment is reaching its highest level. So people are feeling so, so disempowered 
at the moment and this is where the rage is coming from this is where the anger is coming from when you feel you cannot change your circumstances so we have to listen to that anger so people are feeling so disempowered until that disempowerment is being transmuted into a collective will of persistence into a collective will of uh, wanting to change something stepping into our personal power stepping into our individuality but then also collective will individual will and then collective will is being united in a sense and as i said persistence means not running away from challenges not run running away from adversities but facing them facing our adversities and facing our anger i was told that i can be assured that this is really happening individually and then collectively as well. Also, I was told that to measure your degree of evolution, connect to others and you will receive a map to your consciousness where you are energetically standing. So other people will reflect where you are energetically standing, what you are activating in other people and what they are activating in you. So they are your biggest teachers because they will reflect back to you where your level of consciousness is standing and where you're standing energetically you are going through an empowerment test to realize your potential and reminiscence your spiritual growth so to understand that your potential lies within you that is what the anger is about it is activating because you feel this empowerment but that is because there's an empowerment test that is taking place you are being tested how persistent you are, how resilient you are. Are you running away, as I said, or you are facing your challenges? And there's also a level of commitment here when it comes to our growth. Level of commitment and letting go of fear. Because when that commitment happens, you also let go of fear of what might happen. You are being forced, in a sense, to let go of fear. And when you are being forced to let go of fear, what happens is that you are facing loads of your fears you are facing your, your biggest nightmares your biggest nightmares are being manifested in front of you and they are like okay look at us look at us fears and what you can do about us now it's happening what you were afraid of how you are going to resolve this there's no more putting things aside and pushing things aside and pushing things away and then procrastinating now you have to face the test and when you face that test and you face those uh, uncertain situations and the uncertainty in your life, then at the same time you are letting go of fear. And then that automatically raises your vibration and you get to a higher level of consciousness. And that's what this initiation is about. And this is when the transmutation of your karma is happening as well which is involving other people and this is where the transmutation of your trauma is happening as well because in that moment you have chosen to respond to a pattern in a different way so you have broken that pattern in that very moment because you have responded to it in a different way you did not respond to that from a place of fear but you responded to that from a place of empowerment and love because empowerment is a byproduct of love. So there's a reminiscence of your spiritual growth as well through this evolution. And I was also told that the first steps of this evolution that is taking place are followed by high jumps and quantum shifts. So really like when you are able to pass through that threshold, when you have faced your fears, like your biggest fears, then the quantum jump is happening and it's happening quite fast okay so every initiation is about that particular test when you are afraid but you are still courageous and instead of pushing away your fear you are embracing your fear and you are moving forward with your fear not without your fear because the definition of courage is moving forward and doing something despite your fears so using your fear in your own advantage uh, it's almost like that threshold, actually, it translates perfectly to the map of consciousness that I many times talked about from Dr. David Hawkins. The level of courage is the level of 200, where there's an immense amount of healing taking place. Because if you have passed through that threshold, then you will be able to go up, 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 up very quickly in a 
quantum jump like in a quantum way however if you want to pass the next threshold which is the level of love there's also a big initiation that is taking place on that level and you will be required on that level to face even bigger fears of yours that you were not ready to face at the level of courage so there are certain situations that are coming into your life in a repetitive way and this is what is happening now there are certain things certain patterns that are coming back from the past and they are getting repeated because there's the next level of initiation when you can finally pass the next threshold which is love okay so this is what is taking place now there's a repetition of certain patterns so you can respond to them differently and that is initiating you to a much much higher level but that particular initiation is being followed by quantum jumps by big shifts all of a sudden so it's beautiful what is taking place and that is why you are required not to abandon your fears but to embrace them so we are definitely not moving backward but we are spiraling up okay and it might seem like we are moving backward because we are facing certain things from i don't know like 10 years ago or two years ago when you had your first spiritual awakening now you are having your next spiritual awakening which is propelling you to a much higher level also i was told that on a 3d level there's creation of a power grid that is happening so there's really like a power grid where power is being insured on the planet through force so these negative influences and entities what we would call you know those that are ruling our planet and the global elite they want to ensure their power by creating a power grid on the planet and i talked about that many times in the past so they want to ensure their power by force by forcing certain things and certain narratives on us and forcing us in a sense or manipulating us to give away our personal power to them and occult power so in previous videos i talked about that that they are trying their best to do that because they know that they are losing now so they are crossing a threshold at this very moment as well just as us and that either breaks their occult power or it ensures their occult power and it will work with certain people that they will have power over those people and groups of people but with other groups they will not have power over they will not have power over those that are claiming their personal power so personal power also means your free will and using your free will not being afraid of your free will taking the responsibility of your free will because only a responsible soul and a responsible human being can use their free will free will comes with a lot of responsibility on a 3d level as i said there is a creation of this power grid and that is being manifested in problems like physically in the power grid there's uh, the price of uh, electricity and power there's a power crisis in the world right now and that is because it is reflecting perfectly and there's a direct correlation between that power grid and the occult power grid as well that is being built right now the bacteria of the mind is being manifested in hunger and lack so the soul can claim its birthright its occult potential and power and it's so interesting that i wasn't given uh, the word virus of the mind i was given the word the bacteria of the mind so i'm sure there's some uh, significance in that i need to look it up because there's a difference between virus viruses and bacteria but yeah i was given that expression the bacteria of the mind the, is being manifested and, and in hunger and lack so whatever we have in our collective consciousness that there's not enough there's this constant fear around not having enough is being manifested but that is because we have to claim our power and birthright and uh, occult potential as well there's a war taking place on this occult level and the insured method is love so what is that it can neutralize fear and the wars and the games of the ego the playground of the ego it is love love can do that the opposite spectrum the opposite polarity of fear all right so there's a letting go of our fears there's a facing of our fears first of all of our vulnerability of what we are what we have pushed aside 
uh, the aspect of ourselves that was disowned by us, that was even shamed by us, now we are claiming that, reclaiming that aspect of ourselves. And by claiming that, we are letting go of fear, as I said, and we can tap into, into love, in, into that unconditional love, which is a much higher level. And I was also told, strengthen your peripheral vision so you can see what is taking place on multiple levels. And I was thinking about this, what can this mean? You know, what does it mean to strengthen your peripheral vision? And then I realized that what the metaphor of this is, I mean, the meaning of this is that all that social conditioning and all the repeating patterns and all our traumas that were influencing our path and the decisions that we made was making us to look only in a certain direction. Trauma is making you to look in a certain direction, almost like having a tunnel vision, but not finding your way out. It is the territory of the mind when the mind is trying to find solutions to, to complicated problems, but it doesn't find its way out. And what is happening now, there's a widening of our perspective. There's a higher perspective here. And by this peripheral vision, what we can understand by this is really having awareness and having a deeper awareness about ourselves as well and the world around us by having different perspectives. Even when we are looking in a certain direction because of our trauma, because our trauma is also forming our path, our purpose, it is playing a great part in how we are completing our life purpose. So even when we have a tunnel of vision when it comes to that and a particular direction, our perspective is being widened. I don't know if that's the right word or just stretched because we have stepped into a higher level of awareness. And with that awareness comes the ability to be the observant. So when, for example, you are opening your third eye and there is an opening of your psychic abilities and clairvoyant abilities, your peripheral vision is getting changed. You develop your peripheral vision, so you become the observer. I said observant, but observer is the right word. You are becoming the observer of your own world, of your own life as well, your own patterns, your behaviors. And you are able to perceive different frequencies and different vibrational patterns as well within yourself and within others as well. So in a sense, you are able to perceive the spirit world and those higher frequencies and that what it means to develop your psychic abilities. And this is what is happening with us now. Our perspective is wider. So many times when we are having our peripheral vision, we are perceiving these different frequencies. But as soon as we look at those things directly, they disappear. So this is what um, I was told, that this is what is developing. And metaphorically, that means, yeah, psychic abilities as well. But then also to be the observer of our own lives and developing a higher awareness and understanding when we are operating from our conditioning and when we are operating from love, when we are operating from fear, when is fear being activated and that fight or flight, when the trauma is being activated and when we are perceiving information or receiving information as well because our intuition is telling us something. So differentiating and then discernment, understanding what is fear, what is trauma, and what is intuition? So from that higher level of awareness, which is the level of love, the unconditional love, we are able to see multiple perspectives and multiple levels. We are able to see what is taking place on these levels. And we are able to understand that our world is not built on the victim-perpetrator game. This is how it's looking from a 3D perspective. But on a higher dimension, higher perspective, there's only oneness. So the difference between the objective and subjective disappears. There's no more polarity because we understand that we are both the victim and the perpetrator. And those that we perceive as perpetrators are also victims. So we are not the victims of the global elite. We are the victims of ourselves because there's only oneness and unity 
and uh, our shadows are being reflected in them. So this is what humanity is understanding now, that the key to our development, the key to our sovereignty and freedom lies within understanding that there are no games, they are just perceptions of these games. So I hope it made sense because I was trying to do my best to explain this and I hope it makes sense why I receive these things metaphorically and how they translate to what is happening in our external world. Yeah, so we are living amazing times and I know and I always say that they are challenging. I know that they are uncomfortable but man, the the amount of initiation and uh, transmutation of, of karma that is taking place now is, is unbelievable. It's really worth it, I'm telling you. We are the pioneers of this change. And if we are not afraid to be the pioneers and we are not running away from these changes and challenges, then we will be able to go great lengths. This is the best investment that we are working on. We are working on facing our biggest fears. So if we don't run away from that, then our initiation is insured. And uh, I also wanted to say that the, the fact that sometimes we are losing control of certain things and we are facing uncertainty is the best thing that can happen to us. Because in those moments, we can really surrender to the process. For example, the fact that I lost weight and I might not like how I look like in this very moment, it is still teaching me to let go of wanting to control my body. To surrender to the process, this is bringing up some insecurities in me that I had deep within for a very long time, but I did not have the courage to face or I wasn't ready to face. It is definitely teaching me to accept myself the way I am, to be in the flow of life and not to be in control of how much weight I am gaining or losing and to be okay with the fact that change is constant. That is the only thing that is constant. It is okay not to be okay. It is okay not to like yourself in some situations, but it's okay not to be at your best. And it is also changing my definition and my perspective about being at my best. Because what does it mean to be at your best? It certainly doesn't mean to be at your best physically or aesthetically. No, it means something else. So it is interesting that my whole definition about uh, well-being and love and relationships and everything is, is changing so guys this is what i wanted to say in today's video i hope it resonated i hope it helped i will be back with probably more channel messages and then now 2023 is approaching and i'm planning to do prediction videos obviously like every prediction video is just you know the energy that is being translated and the information that is coming through based on the current energies so yes, I will do that as well and I will channel some information. I'm planning to do some card readings about the next year as well on my other channel. Also, if you have any suggestions about information that I should check about the next year or I should channel about, then please let me know. If you have any suggestions of videos that I should make, also please let me know in the comment section. And uh, again, uh, everybody who is supporting my channel is greatly appreciated. If you want to book a personal reading, you can find information about that down below in the description box. You can access that link. And also, if you want to watch more readings, then you can subscribe to my other channel, which is called Esoterica with Evelyn. And then those of you that want to support my work, you can do it on Patreon. Check out what I'm posting there. And if you want to make a donation, you can find the PayPal link down below in the description box. I'm trying to find other solutions and alternatives to PayPal. It is quite hard, but hopefully I will find something next year because I don't like to work with them, obviously, as many of us. So thank you so much again for being here. Thank you for your support. Take care and I cannot wait to see you next time.